of their destinies, but to encourage the people who live in communities to be proud of what they have. Now, looking at the crowd, I feel very old, but I see a couple of you who have a few few gray hairs and might, uh, and, and might understand the point I'm going to make. Number one, as far as the housing issue is concerned, I asked Bill Morton, president of the chamber, to post a question a few weeks ago. Because all we're getting is runaround, and we're getting a, a sort of an answer here, sort of an answer there, and God knows what kind of answer out, out into the other fields. My question is, will the, the building, the, the home for seniors that the front faces on Devon, will that or will that not be spared? Because you know, my friends, in the last couple of months, we've never heard a definitive question on it. We've heard that the possibility of the, the common room may be lost, but what's going to replace it? That has been posted. No one from officialdom has bothered to answer that question. Now, I grew up in the 70s. And yes, I did indeed inhale. So I'm a little, so I'm a little skeptical of what people say. So I would like Alderman Moore to make a simple statement, which is yes or no, because all of us who are over 60 have been paying into the city treasury in some way or another taxes. We are entitled, by virtue of being taxpayers, affordable housing in our old, in, as we get older. We're entitled to it. That's right. It's not a gift to us. That's right. We've been paying into it. Now, it might be fine if you've got a couple extra dollars in the bank and you can go off to, you know, assisted living or one of these fancy $5,000 a month uh, senior residents, which is fine. If you've got it, God bless you. But, you know, not all of us have that much money in the bank. And just because we are living in city housing, does it make us fourth, fifth, or sixth class people? Right. If we were good enough to put the money in in our early years, we're damn eligible and should deserve the promise of what we've paid into. Now, with regards to Target, There's a number of things over 20 years of, of being bishop that decisions that I have made and things that I have done that I sometimes <laughs> wince about. So I'm going to ask you for your forgiveness. Because a number of years ago, if you remember, this sort of unknown guy by the name of Joe Moore caused complete consternation in the city council because he introduced the anti-big box ordinance. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Raise your hands, I wanna make sure. We're all, we're all, we're all good. You all remember that? Yeah. Well, I, I decided that year to present Alderman Moore with the same shows of the worker award for Oh, honey, I'm beyond gongs. I'm beyond gongs. <laughs> My community can't stop me. We'll, we'll, we'll dispense from the gong. Because what I've got to say needs to be heard. So we presented him with the award. And he said that night, 
how important it is to maintain the historic structures of our Chicago neighborhoods. I'll repeat that. It is important to maintain the historic structures of our neighborhoods. Now, it's not that I'm going to ask for... Pardon? You know, I thought about it. But, you know, it's, it's not, a, it's, it's not a, a policy that I want to get into. The only question is, how much did it take for the big box industry to buy Joe Moore's political soul? I have said for years that elected officials have to be the servants of the people, not concubines to outside interests. That's right. This community, like the one where I live, was horribly decimated when a shopping mall was put in. They brought in uh, a, it was a cat, and, and, and you know, at 63 with all the cholesterol, the, the, the mine, the, the mine kind of, but it was, it, it was a big store. And all, all of a sudden we saw all the little stores, the hardware stores, the clothing stores, the bakeries, businesses that had been there since my father's youth, all disappeared. And you know what? That mall now is 80% vacant. It's not, my friends, that I am against, that I am against the opportunity for companies to make business. But you cannot saturate a geographical area. It's like Walgreens. You blink and you're, you're, you're on top of a note. That's why Walgreens is now has to close a number of their stores. They built too many. The, the opportunities to get to a, a Target, a Walmart, it's not that difficult for us to get to. Why bring all that unnecessary traffic into an academic environment? So my, my words to you is that Keep your option of ownership. Do not be steamrollered. Bill's not aware that I was going to say this, but you know, there's a price to pay.